Hello, my name is Lisa. Um, for my project, I have made a chaperone with a Lyra pipe. Um, Lyra pipe is this long tail that I have hanging down to my feet. It's also called a tippet. Um, I, I thought that one of the most interesting things that we've learned about so far this semester has been the hats that have been worn through the Middle Ages. Um, I wish that we wore cool hats like that today and had more styles than just like beanies and, and baseball caps. It's what it seems like everybody wears. Um, so, since it's kind of getting chillier out, I thought this would be a nice um, fall time accessory I can wear in not only this way, like a scarf, or I guess I could wear it down that way. But later on, the chaperones were actually born from um, putting your head in where the face hole is, and then you have your scarf going one way, like that, and this long tippet or lyre pipe going down the other way. Ta-da! Um, so I'll give you some history and um, how I made this chaperone hood. So there was a ton of different styles of the chaperone worn in medieval Europe in the late Middle Ages. Um, these are all different styles that are worn in the 14th century in Europe. We know a lot about the different types of hats because illustrations of them have been found in manuscripts. Um, we know that all classes in med medieval society can be seen wearing chaperones in different styles, um, from the rich to the poor. Uh, the rich may have uh, fancier chaperones with embellishments and um, a technique called dagging which was very popular in the second half of the 14th century. A moralist writer named William Langland felt that those who loved worldliness ordered dyed clothes as cited in Friedman. Um, patterns dating from tailors in the 14th century in London have been found um, this is a copy of the original find, um, so I based my copy, or I based my pattern off of this copy. Um, the cutout in the chin was originally used as a gusset in the hood, like on the shoulder, to give more m movement, um, space for movement in the shoulder. Okay, so now that I've got my pattern cut out and ready to sew, um, this is cut on the fold here. This is the top of the hood. Um, here's my dagging. So I'm going to start off by sewing this curve right here so that I can adjust for size if I need to to get it over my head over here. So I realized it would actually be easier if I sewed together the pieces of the Lyra pipe first um, before I close up that seam. So that's what I'm going to do. There we go. I have a quarter inch seam allowance for everything that I'm doing right now. Um, I'll just show you when it's done. So historically this hood would be made out of wool or possibly linen but most likely wool in the medieval days. Um, what I'm working with here is a Ponte de Roma which is a very stable knit fabric. Um, what's nice about it is that it doesn't fray at all and it's really easy to work with. Um, so that way I don't have to finish my um, edges here with anything and I can just leave them cut as they are. Okay, so I'm starting at the very tip 
of the Lyra pipe and I'm going to sew all the way up just one side. Sorry, you get the point. This is a very long hood. I'm going to pause this for a minute now. Okay, so now that I've got this sun to go there, this is the Lyra pipe piece here. Um, it's going to be attached onto this Lyra pipe piece here. Um, and then I'm just going to sew up that seam that I uh, talked about initially, this curve here, that's starting all the way from the tip of the lyra pipe. So, yeah. Okay, so I sewed this um, final stitch here, and then I actually ended up sewing a hem here along the face for the hole. Um, I thought it would kind of even out the weight a little bit and fit my head a little better. So, let me try this on again. And, yeah, I like that a lot better. See a bit better out of it. My lyra pipe still reaches down to my ankles. And yeah, this is how it looks like down. And this is what it looks like um, as a scarf. And there we go.